This is the action steps of tab weapons. You can see there are two sections, combat and then the weapons you have. Typically, whenever you add a weapon to your inventory, there will be fields applied here automatically for you. In the combat section, there are three buttons at the top, surprise, initiative, and turn. This is your surprise check. This is your, just a basic initiative role. Like if you're just gonna move, you're not gonna use a weapon, not gonna use a spell, not doing anything, but you're just doing a standard initiative. Just, you can click that and it will roll initiative for you. Turn, this is for turn undead. If you don't have turn undead, it won't do anything. But if you are a priest and you're trying to turn undead, you would select them and then click the turn button and it'll do all the rolls in the background and then tell you who was turned and who was destroyed or if anybody was turned. The attack matrix is just kind of there for your own benefit. It will have your thaco highlighted in kind of that flesh color and go left or right. If you want to manually roll your dice, you can do so using this chart. The top row is the armor class that you're hitting and the bottom row is roll that you get with your dice total. So in this case, if you rolled a 19, you would hit AC 1. If you could somehow roll a 30 with enough modifiers, you would hit AC negative 10. His thaco is 20. In the weapons section, there are four fields. There is the equipped. There is the initiative. This is what you use to roll initiative for this weapon. In this case, if you double click that or drag and drop it, it's going to roll initiative for the longsword, which is base of five, and then add what you roll to that. So in this case, I rolled a 10. It had a five, so my initiative is 15. The next shows you the type of weapon. In this case, it's melee. Sometimes you'll have thrown or you'll have ranged. Here is the button you will use to attack if you're attacking a monster. Double click it and it will roll just a simple base attack with that weapon and it will tell you the AC you hit if the DM allows you to see that. Then you have damage. In this case, it has two types of damage. The way I've listed them here is the default damage is small and medium, so I don't put small and medium on the damage string. But on the one below that, you'll see it's comma large, and that means that this damage is used for large creatures. So um, you need to manually determine which one of those that you're going to be using. So ask your DM. If he's small or medium, you use the first one. If he's large, you use the second one. You can have as many of these damage fields as you want. You can do that in the weapons properties. In this case, you can see I have a D8 for the slashing first one, and then I have a D12 for the slashing large. So you have name, you have properties, you have initiative of the weapon, and then you have attacks, which is this entire section here. The stat that the attack is based on, if you use base, it'll depend on whether it's a melee or ranged. If it's melee, it's default base will be strength. If it's ranged, its default base will be dex. If you leave this to base, so if they have a high strength, it'll automatically apply the strength bonus to hit or damage. You can also manually set a bonus. So if you're using a plus one longsword, you could put that there. To apply proficiencies to a weapon, in this case, he is using a longsword. It's an elf using a longsword. He's also specialized with a longsword. We need to apply all those proficiencies to this weapon. You'll also note that the value here is negative two, and that's because we haven't applied a proficiency to it, so it assumes this is a non-proficient weapon. To add a proficiency to a weapon, you do that within weapon properties. You click the pencil. The, the add item here on the proficiencies applied find the one that you want to apply to it. In this case, I want to apply the longsword specialization. I also want to apply the Elvish bonus that they get with longswords and short swords. You can see the plus one here, plus one here. It's now plus two, plus two. Once you apply any proficiency to a weapon, it will no longer apply the non-proficiency penalty to it. The only time it will apply a non-proficiency penalty is if you do not have a proficiency applied to it you're done you click the pencil to attack or do damage you need to have creatures do them to I've loaded up a sample map and I'm bringing up the combat tracker clicking on the crossword 
can see that my character is in there. GM is now placing us on the map. And you can see the two kobolds and Delphin Slide Hat. In this case, Delphin is going to move up to the kobold. And then I'm going to drag the attack dice and drop it on the NPC I would like to try to swing at. And if you see the tooltip value change from Cobalt 1, Cobalt 2, you'll, when the tooltip changes, that means that the dice drop will work on that NPC. So I'm going to release. You can see the roll. And depending on how the DM has the combat settings, you can see whether you hit or miss, or he'll have to tell you. In this case, I hit AC 16 versus 7. I missed badly. Do it again. Missed again. Um, had I hit them, I would do the same thing with the dice rolls. In this case, I know they're small, they're cobalts. So I would grab the first damage listed there because it's small and medium. Do the same thing, drag and drop it right on top of them. And dice, you can see that by the tombstone token coming up over the face of the cobalt token. You can also drag and drop the attacks into the combat trigger, which is this box up here. So I will drag that up to here. I want to hit cobalt number two, release it, and you can see I hit it, hit cobalt number two. You could drag and drop the attack dice the same way. This also works with spells, saves, effects. You can do that. You can do the same thing if you're a cleric. Healing, you can drag and drop into the combat tracker directly or onto the map and the token that you're trying to apply it to. If you need to add new weapons, if you want to do it manually, you click the edit list, click the add weapon, and it adds a new weapon. Type in the name. If you want to set the initiative and all these others, you will click on the properties, bring up that. In this case, I want to do a punch, which is going to do a D2 of damage. Drop it here. One D2 damage bludgeoning. I'm not applying the proficiency to it. Not applying weapon speed. Although if you want to set this, you can set it as well. And you'll note that it changes here. And that will be the initiative button that you would use for that particular attack. If, say, you wanted to clone one of these, you could right click on it and clone that item. It will create a duplicate punch. So if you need to have punch one, punch two, perhaps you have a different hit value on one punch versus the other. Uh, like your long sword, short sword, you're dual wielding two different ones. Various options, you can set those simply by cloning it. Um, you can also right click and delete and that will remove the one that you are right clicking on. You can also drag and drop items directly onto your weapons tab section. So say you just picked up a battle axe, you can drag and drop it here and it will add all the options for it that it has configured here. It will also place it into your inventory as well. We could also use a longbow so you can see the ranged here. There is also an ammo field. So like if you have 20 arrows, you can type in 20 and then it will have tick boxes for each arrow that you have. And each time you use it, it will tick one off automatically. So I just shot twice and it ticked off two. This does not reference your inventory. So if you have a stack of 20 arrows in your inventory, it will not reduce it by 19, 18, 17, and so on. This is strictly manually managed um, between your inventory and here. This The ticks will be automatically updated, but it will not remove it from inventory. And now we have the actions powers tab. And you can see here, we have the same combat section we have in the weapons section. We also have in the mode preparation, we have spell slots and a level associated with arcane. So if I am a first level wizard, I would have level one arcane. If I was a priest, I would be, a, and I was level one, it would be level one divine. But these two fields should be managed by the class. You shouldn't have to do these manually. The spell slots are also managed by the class. In some cases, you will get bonuses for wisdom. Some DMs may give 
house rule bonuses for intelligence on the other ones. If you adjust the value in this case, if I wanted to set this character to have two bonus first level spells for his high intelligence, I would set this to three because he already has one. And he got that because he's a level one mage. So next time when he gains a level, if he got another first level spell slot, it would up that to four. It works the same with all the other ones. As you level up, it should manage them from then on. To add spells to the character, you bring up the spell records. And you have a multitude of filters. You can sort them by level, by school, by sphere, and by type. In this case, I want to sort them by first level arcane spells. And I want to pick up a couple, detect magic, drag and drop it. I want to pick up, find familiar, gotta have, identify, and magic missile. And you'll now see that I have four spells listed under spell level one with some options here. The first option here, using the actions display mode, is initiative. The next one is how many times I have this spell memorized. You can adjust that by using these little arrows on the left or right. If you want to remove a memorization slot, you click the left. If you want to add a memorization slot spent for this, you click the right arrow. If you want to cast this spell, you click the 20 sided looking dice there. If you want to apply the effect, you would click that button. And these options on the right may be different depending on the spell types. There is also a group display mode, a summary display mode. I prefer actions. There are also properties for each one of these spells. You click on the gear and you can see there is an initiative. You can change it here. There's also a click to memorize a spell. This does the same thing as this, but it's only one way. You click that, it's gonna add a memorization slot used there. There's also the cast and the damage options listed here as well. You can also drill down into those, the cast option by clicking the gear. You can see the cast properties. In this case, there is no save. There is no target. There is no modifier to damage if they save or anything like that. It's auto hit spell. The only reason you would have the cast here for this spell is so that whenever you click the cast, the memorization slot is used. If you wanted to do damage by casting the spell, you would drag this little blood droplet to whichever target you want to apply that to. Or if you had them targeted, you would just simply click it. In this case, we're going to drag and drop it to cobalt number two over here on the map. It rolls the damage. We hit it for five and he died. An easier way to do that instead of opening all that up, we click it here, drag and drop it over there. But before you do that, you will typically want to click cast. If you have a spell that has a save associated with it, you would drag and drop it onto the target. In this case, it doesn't need a save. So there is no dice rolled, but you'll note that the memorization slot is now set to zero. If you have spells memorized like this, we'll memorize two magic missiles and a detect magic. And then you change the mode from preparation to combat. It is only going to list the spells that you have memorized. You'll also have this little box up here to show you, you have three slots that are memorized. As you can see here, there's two there, one there. If you want to see all the spells in your book, just go to standard and you can still see what's memorized here. And again, you go back to preparation mode. If you are in combat mode and you cast a spell and it's the last slot that that spell has, when you click it, you will get a hide spell from combat listing. Um, by default, it won't automatically hide that spell because you may need to drag and drop something after you've cast it. Once you've, you're done with it, um, if you just want to remove it from the list since you don't have any more memorization slots used for it, click that little X and it goes away. So now we know we only have two more magic missiles memorized. There are some spells like Melcesidero that do have saves associated with them. We'll give our wizard here a copy of the spell, let him memorize it. And then what we can do is we can drag and drop it onto one of the cobalts. 
if he saved. He did not save. So he takes damage, full damage, and then we also apply this effect. In this case, it's ongoing damage for 2d4 every round. So we'll apply that to him, drag and drop it onto him. And you'll see the effect is applied to the cobalt. And each round, he will take 2d4 damage. will be rolled in. It'll last for two rounds. And we can go through combat round to see that be applied. The 2d4 that were just rolled, that was for the ongoing Mel Sassadero damage. There is also the standby fireball, which allows you to target multiple NPCs. In this case, we've targeted Cobalt 1 and Cobalt 2. We're going to cast Fireball on them after they've run away. You can see both of them are targeted here. And when I click this, it will make each of them save versus spells because it's a Fireball. One saved, one failed. So what that will do is whenever I roll damage, one of them then will take half damage. The other one will take full damage. So you can see there he took half. This one took the full 24. This guy took 12 damage. To set a spell up like that, I will cover spell properties in another tutorial for the Dungeon Master.